We're gonna pull Adam West out of the past and shove his beautiful, innocent little body into the trailer for the new Batman. And Adam West! No one's, okay. We're doing something very different than all the other videos we've done to this point. So the new Batman's out. We've all seen it at this yeah. point, right? In theaters. Yeah, I love the movie too. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. All, all the way through. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow, yeah. that's good. That's big for you. I never left the theater. What? <laughs> Once. Oh. I never walked out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Proud of you, man. Yeah. You're moving I mean, up. Do you guys think that like this is the most gritty take on Batman that we've seen? Yeah. He's pretty emo. He's pretty yeah. emo. Yeah. 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 Like full blown eye makeup. But, and it's not like clean either. Yeah. It's smudgy. Oh yeah. And that's how you know smudgy, he needs it. Smudgy you eyeballs. Know? That's how you yeah. know. That's who Batman's supposed to be. Batman is gritty. Batman is this torch soul who's navigated life without parents. It's violent, it's gritty, it's terrifying, it's lonely. But poor Adam West. Hello, Batman speaking. Poor Adam West. Poor Adam. The original Batman. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it's a corn fest. I knew you'd employ your sneezing powder, so I took an anti-allergy pill. And it's shameful. Uh oh, better put five cents in the meter. And it just, I know it, it yes. Huh? It's okay. It's okay. You're gonna be he's, okay. Man. He's, gonna be he's right. skinny. He wears little underpants on the outside of his stockings. No, it's it's frustrating that Adam West, who is hands down one of the greatest acting talents in the history of mankind, was not given the opportunity to play this deep and dark character. The producers of this show wasted this icon's talents. I just can't understand why they would do such an injustice to this character. We gotta figure out, I mean, is there anyone in the office that really knows Batman? I mean, there's one man. Dean, talk to us, man. I, I don't know much about Batman, I just have very strong opinions. <laughs> so maybe you can help enlighten us as to what Adam West deserves. So let me spin you guys a yarn about our dear Batman. Batman was created in 1939 in issue 27 of Detective Comics, which actually, DC Comics is Detective Comics Comics. <gasps> he carries a gun. He like straight up murders people. Oh, okay. and uh, well, actually, Batman doesn't kill. Yeah, I thought Batman didn't kill. Oh no! Actually, the first appears of the Joker. Batman kills the Joker, and then later on they figured out a way to bring him back. But those early comics didn't pull any punches. They were very dark. So Batman was born in the darkness? Molded by it, some say. <laughs> Molded by it. But then came the Comics Code Authority. There was a book that came out in the 50s called The Seduction of the Innocent that argued comic books were corrupting children simply by depicting crime and violence. It even singled out the Batman comic and argued that Batman and Robin were in a gay relationship. So there was a real effort to make Batman super whitewashed and friendly for kids. No more killing. All of the villains, they have like wacky plans instead of being like serial killers and stuff. This is where you get all of these Silver Age Batman issues where he's wearing like rainbow costumes and zebra print costumes. The 1966 Batman film and the series were a direct adaptation of those Silver Age comics. As a matter of fact, the creator of the show, William Dozier, had apparently never read a comic book in his life. And after skimming a few issues, he decided that the show should be a comedy and essentially a parody of the character. Are you a vocal group? No, we're duly deputized officers of the law. You may return to your business, citizen. But uh, poor Adam West, he'll be forever known as the lamest Batman of them all. I think we can all collectively agree that the comic book police did our boy dirty. Yeah. And we How gotta, dare you? We gotta right this wrong. We all know that we peaked when Adam West was Batman. No one can compete. And we keep recasting, we keep trying again. You're Christian Bales? Yep. I pick Adam West. You're Robert Pattinson's? I pick Adam West. You're Bruce, what's his name? Who's the yeah, other guy? Yeah, was there another I just one? forgot the other guy's I'm name. thinking of Bruce Wayne, but there's also a guy who acted ben, it. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. I already forgot about him. <laughs> We're gonna pull that pure, beautiful Adam West out of the past and bring him into the present. We're gonna keep Adam West relevant and shove his beautiful, innocent little body into the trailer for the new Batman. <laughs> it's time to make Adam West grit again. <laughs> We're gonna make Adam West grit again. Should we make hats? Probably not. I don't think we have to make yeah, hats. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's skip the hats. Yeah. Then. For our boy. <laughs> Touch our limbs. Show that you care by touching us. 
Get over here! Show you care! Adam West! You changed that, I'm gonna do yours next time! Adam West! No one's. Okay? We should probably just start. It's just for us. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, team. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. So with this video, we're doing something very different than all the other videos we've done to this point. We are using Nuke. Previously, Cordos used After Effects for all of their compositing. After Effects is great, but the industry standard for compositing is using the Foundry's Nuke. This is the standard in Hollywood. And so we want to start incorporating it here at Corridor to enhance the quality of the work that we're putting out. The main difference between After Effects and Nuke is that Nuke is not layer-based, it's node-based. After Effects is great. It's something that I've used my entire life. You can make some really nice high-end stuff, but if your project gets too big, you start to run into some issues. You're applying effects to individual layers, and then you have to start pre-comping those layers, meaning you're combining all into another layer. So now all your effects are hidden inside of that. And you might have pre-comps of pre-comps of pre-comps, so you have these nested sequences where all your effects are hidden in layers and layers of things that you cannot possibly navigate. In Nuke, what's so great about it is since it's node-based, everything is visible from the top level, almost like a bird's eye perspective. Every single command that you want, every time you want to move its position or move its scale or apply a glow, you can see all of it from a bird's eye perspective right there. And anything that you change at the very top will trickle down through all the wires to the very bottom, which makes doing a large amount of shots like we have to do in this week a lot more possible, a lot more doable. And again, that end product is going to be, mwah, it's going to be high end. It's going to be Hollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm primarily, like for my VFX work, I use Nuke as my program of choice. It's what I'm most comfortable with. And Jordan primarily uses Houdini, and for compositing, you use After Effects. So this project is a really great opportunity for Jordan to kind of get his little VFX toesies wet and dip into that Nuke pipeline a little bit. So we're gonna finish prepping our VFX side of things while Matt digs into the original Adam West Batman movie so we can lock down this edit. Let's do it. To the Batmobile! So the first step on our Bat journey is to find clips from our original Batman movie with Adam West to possibly use uh, for VFX purposes or for sound bites. All of this serves to immerse our, our old Adam West into a new modern trailer. So after I cut down the trailer, I just kind of went through and watched the movie, and there's a lot of ridiculous stuff in here. There's a whole battle between Batman and a shark for some reason. I mean, this was before Jaws, so this is like the original Jaws. Oh, there's a moment where the penguin's in disguise and no one believes this. It's like the worst disguise ever and he still makes little penguin jokes. I did find this, this awesome sequence of Batman pretending like he's drugged and dancing like an Egyptian. I think this moment, we can put this in that little hallway gunfight scene in the new trailer. That would just be so funny if we just see Batman dancing like a fool and dodging bullets. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. This movie is, this movie's a lot. This movie's a lot. Um, but I think I can rescue Adam West from his goofy, campy prison and place him in a serious, real movie for real adults. <laughs> So we are underway right now with the visual effects for our Adam West Batman. And the exciting part about this process is that it's my first time in Nuke and Fenner has lovingly and graciously uh, shown me the ropes. Right now I feel like a, a baby and Fenner is raising this baby to be a more helpful adult. Fenner has entrusted me with this shot, which is a really fun one of the Penguin, Colin Firth, played by Colin Powell, played by Colin Mockery. Who played the, the Penguin? <laughs> But yeah, the new Penguin obviously is turning around fearful of Batman chasing him. And uh, we need to put the old Penguin in. So how do we do that, right? There's a couple steps. The first thing we gotta do is we have to find a source of footage of the old Penguin from the Batman movie. So we looked through the archives and we came up with this. It's a Penguin smoking a really long cig. The angle works well. 
You know, the, the eye direction isn't good, but we can solve that later. So once we've got this done, we ran it through Topaz Video Enhance AI, which up the footage that we gave it from 720p all the way to 4K, adding a lot of detail. So now all of a sudden we can put these two together and it won't seem so out of place. So now we are ready to roto out the head and nobody likes roto, that's the reality. And luckily we don't have to do that anymore, thanks to Runway ML. Runway ML is an online AI driven platform that has a very, very powerful roto tool. Literally two clicks. I clicked this footage two times and it came up with this map for me. Again, it's not perfect. I had to do some fine tuning on the back end, but it saved me a ton of time. We have a big problem here, right? He's looking off to the right. The penguin in the movie is looking camera left, right? What are you gonna do? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna cut out his eyes. It has to be done. I overlaid our penguin here with freshly cut eye holes and he happened to line up perfectly with the left eye of the other penguin. So this is actually the eye of the actor from underneath. It's still made of penguin, but this is the new penguin's eyes in the old penguin's body. We're getting weird now. This eye is the same eye in both eye sockets and it actually works pretty well. And at that point, you just need to actually track the footage of the penguin, stick the head on, do some roto to bring back the foreground elements, and then it comes down to the compositing. And that's really the extent of it. You know, it's a very quick shot, but overall, I think it holds up quite well. I'm, I'm quite happy. Again, I feel like I've escaped maybe the little baby cage. Don't know the technical term for that, but I call it the baby cage. A crib? The crib, yes, I call it a baby cage. I don't know. Baby. <laughs> So I've escaped the baby cage and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm still kind of crawling, but I'll take a few steps before I fall. You're doing it! You're doing it. <laughs> Dad! Oh! Oh! oh I actually gave myself a dead leg. Dad! <laughs> anyway, back to work. So. There's this one shot in the Batman trailer that I know we absolutely have to do. To me, this was really the most iconic shot of the trailer and maybe of the whole film for the Batman. Because when I saw this in the theaters, I was just like, oh my God, that's, that's like one of the cooler shots I've ever seen. We thought how funny would it be to bring in this old 1966 Batmobile and comp it into this shot. So what I did first is I just went digging on the web. There was like a $5 Batmobile model, super janky looking, but I did the trick. So we've got this guy here. It had a little bit of texture on it, but I basically reshaded the model just to, so that we could get that light interaction because there's that big explosive light source. So then from there, kind of hand animate and match move the Batmobile to the actual 2022 Batmobile. <laughs> Again, you can see what we got out of Blender here. This is basically it. It's nothing special. It's, it's pretty janky looking, honestly. This is my background as a compositor, you know, working on feature films, you're not actually gonna always end up with assets that look good enough for the movie. So even if you get a render like this, you know, the shot's gotta go out, you gotta do what you can to make it work. So the profile of the 1966 Batmobile and the 2022 Batmobile are actually really similar. They're both based on muscle cars. It actually made it, you know, not too crazy to line these up. Basic premise of comp is you have to make sure all your color values are matching, your black levels. Like the whole point of compositing is to make it look like every single element, every single render, any kind of asset you're using in your shot, you wanna make it look like it's been shot through that actual camera lens. Once we're doing that, it really starts to sit within the shot. Pretty nice looking final shot that I'm really hoping will kind of be the uh, icing on the cake for this overall piece. So we've been working on a whole bunch of other shots, but this one shot of the back copter that I did a couple days ago uh, is definitely one that I want to go back to. Uh, we're kind of playing up that gag because it's pretty iconic, you know, hilarious thing from the 1966 film. And I really found that the shots that I had comped weren't holding up to the rest of the piece we'd created, especially the Batmobile stuff at the end. That's the one shot I really want to try to step it up. I couldn't find a model of the 1966 bat copter. So I just went, searched the uh, bowels of the internet and managed to find a fairly decent FBX, brought this into Blender real quick. And that's where I started to kind of hack together this bat copter. So I sculpted these wings, kind of tweaked some things on the model and got it to a point where I was like, okay, you know what, this is gonna hold up in the shot. If you can get something to the point where it looks good enough when it's motion blurred and out of focus, then for me, that's probably gonna hold up. So basically we're able to now add this in to some stock footage, which 
you know, looks okay, but it doesn't really look like it sits within that Batman movie, which is what we're really trying to do here. So looking at a shot from the Batman, it's like crazy orange color grading on there, uh, flared out lights, we get that anamorphic flaring. So I basically built out a little bit of a setup here, which basically brings us that weird lens distortion, that haloing effect that we get, that cat's eye bokeh. And it kind of sits it more within the rest of the film and we get a pretty nice result. So I'm hoping that with this extra little, you know, finishing pass on the shots, that we'll, uh, you know, have a really nice final edit here. Oh, Nick, I think when we were working on this Batman video, I think Jordan actually thinks he's Batman now. Check this out. Master Wayne. Alfred. Good Lord. What are you doing in here? You wanna, do you wanna- What are you doing in my back cave? Do you wanna tell the uh, fans about Puget? Puget Systems, can we trust them? Yes, we can. Yeah, these Puget Systems have been amazing for working on this project. They don't just sell Premier Workstations. No, they do way more. They help you build it from the ground up. Custom fit exactly what you need, like a bat suit with more wires. A custom fit PC tailored to perfection, like Alfred Taylor's My Suits. My voice. My voice is hurting. He might be a little bit crazy right now, but he's not wrong. These Puget systems are truly amazing. Alfred, why are you talking like that? Oh God, What dude. happened to your voice? Come here, come here. What? Come here. Okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you some truths, okay? Puget systems literally increased my simulation speed by 15 times. I'm not even joking about that. I'm dead, I'm actually dead serious. It's crazy. I literally went from a three hour simulation to like 15 minutes. I don't know if that map is right. I actually need some tea. Alfred, tea, please, please. Please, please, tea. Sure thing, Master Wayne. So, if you want to learn more, go to PugetSystems.com oh or click the link down below if you want to get your hands on one of these sweet beasts. That's that's exactly what I was saying. Batman says the call to action. That's right, PugetSystems.com or just click the link that we placed below this video. Alfred, clean up the wires. Clean up the wires. I'm gonna break my neck. I swear to this guy. Honestly, man, please. Please. Plus, we're going to NAB, so we're doing a meetup at the Puget Booth. So come say hi on Monday. Have you been here the whole time? The entire time. Honestly, security's kind of lacking. What a week of cutting and watching Batman, new and old. Our boys over here have already finished VFX shots, and I can already plug them in. Their workflow is insanely fast, and I think we have a cut that works super well, but what I feel like it really needs now is that extra little bit of sauce. And that comes in the form of a soundtrack. A soundtrack that incorporates the original Batman theme into a cinematic, dark, gritty, modern score. And I think we can call upon the talents of Casey Edwards to design a score for us that will incorporate that and let it ride throughout the piece. I think it's the final step here to really tie this piece together. So I can't wait to hear what Casey has cooking up for us. Once I drop that in, I think we have a final piece here that we can show everyone and I'm super excited. Boys, how do you feel? How do you feel? Put all this, all this hard work into this project. And now, finally, you're about to see it on the big screen. I'm excited. I'm well, excited. I, I think we're both excited. Very excited. You know, excited. It's, it's a long time in the making, a whole week, and here we are. I mean, we don't need to say anything else. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. Abominable outlaws. I swear by heaven, I'll kill you all. all adds up to a sinister riddle. Hello? Batman speaking. What kind of creature would gobble up a bird in a tree? The penguin. How come Batman doesn't dance anymore? You grace us with your presence. The whole world in a crash! Prepare Batcopter for immediate takeoff. to the Batmobile. Someday she just
can't get rid of a bomb. West Adam West Adam West Adam West <laughs> Everything in this looks like an alternate universe where this movie was made. Like, everything fits so nicely. The Batmobile coming through the fire there almost just looks like the original footage. I had to be like, wait, no, that's, that's a different car. For me, the profile shot of the, of the Batmobile is like super dope where you really realize, oh no, hold on, this is different. And once you get to the actual Batmobile, it just gets down to like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it actually gets like legit cool. Yeah. <laughs> it makes Adam West about as cool as possible. And you know what, actually, that that brings me to my last question here. Did we evade the comic book police? I think you guys did Adam West proud. I think, I think you've overcome the censorship of the 60s and placed Adam in his rightful place as the greatest Batman ever. Oh, nice. Give it up. You did it. Yeah. I'm uh, absolutely blown away by the new workflow. It made this so fast and so effective and so like, high level with the final touches and finishes that you can put on the back end with the film grain and the glows and just the way that it operates. You know, Fenner was a great teacher through this whole experience. The end product, the fact that that's done in a week still blows my mind. I have to shout out the score that was custom made for this. It was so, so cool. Casey Edwards did this and he did a freaking fantastic job of like really cementing this as like a serious super serious version of the original Batman score. Yeah, the way he tied in the old yeah. school theme with the new theme. Yeah, yeah. Like, just, Maybe. when I first heard that, I got goosebumps. Yeah. By the way, we have a Crew Cuts episode that kind of goes into depth into what Casey does uh, for Corridor, so. Check that out on our website, which is CorridorDigital.com. This video actually exists as a standalone on the main Corridor channel, so check that out and pass it on to some friends if you're into that kind of thing. Is it good? Is this believable? <laughs> is this Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hit subscribe to the channel. You gotta subscribe to the channel. I'm back it over here. You gotta subscribe We're to the channel. We're multiplying. Subscribe to the channel. Corridor Digital.com. Subscribe. Wake you up tonight.